Yo, how we feeling y'all? Welcome back to another video and today we have another challenge here on NBA 2K20. What we're going to be doing today is similar to the last video where last video we were not able to make any trades. We effectively got rid of trades in the NBA for every single team and we had to rebuild the team uh, pretty much exclusively through free agency and the draft. What we're going to be doing today is kind of the opposite or at least as close to the opposite as you can get where we will be accepting every single CPU trade offer. You know when you're playing 2K and you're scrolling through and teams keep offering you terrible trades all the way through your entire simulation. Well today it is my responsibility as GM of whatever team to accept every single trade offer. So as per usual, we're going to be doing a three-year rebuild challenge. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and choose a random team here. We are in the fantasy draft. Uh, we're just going to randomly generate the team as well, so I'm not going to be picking anything in the fantasy draft. So let's just go ahead here, randomly scroll through the teams. I close my eyes. Three, two, one, stop. And we're going to go ahead and get the New York Knicks. They could definitely use a rebuild, uh, regardless of the fantasy draft or not. So we're going to go ahead and jump in here and uh, see how it goes. And before we get too far into the video here, I just want to remind you guys to leave a like on the video if you end up enjoying the content. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. It's nice to see that we have the number six pick, so that's looking good for our team. Uh, but yeah, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead here and simulate the entire draft. And I will see you guys at the start of the season. We'll take a look at what team we ended up with. All right, so here we are at the start of the season and taking a look at the team Kawhi Leonard is who we ended up picking up with. I believe it was the sixth overall pick. Uh, then we got Malcolm Brogdon, Buddy Heald, Mo Bombo, Willie Cauley Stein, Shabazz Napier, Taj Gibson, Jamal Crawford, Jeff Green, Cam Reddish, Cam Johnson, Torian Prince, Gary Payton II, and Kadeem Allen. Uh, so obviously, I mean, having a top pick, getting a guy like Kawhi Leonard is nice. Uh, you know, obviously. There's no expectation that we have to get rid of him or anything. Obviously, we're going to hold on to Kawhi as long as we can, uh, at least for the next two years of this three-year challenge. Uh, everybody else on this team, I would say, is pretty much uh, not safe whatsoever. So my strategy for this video a little bit, obviously, considering there are uh, all these trades, is to just trade as many of the players as we have already uh, right at the beginning and pretty much set up our team. And after every single trade that we are forced to accept, uh, we just have to go ahead and, and adjust the team and make sure that we're still going to be a strong competitive team. So the first thing that we're going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and shop around as many of these guys as we can. I see we have a couple of young guys. we got Mo Bamba, young guy with potential. And obviously I saw we had Cam Reddish, Cam Johnson. So yeah, honestly, I'm just going to start shopping around some of these guys, uh, seeing what trades we can come up with. We're at least going to start off with just our regular rebuild, making as many trades as we can, trying to be competitive right off the bat. So let's uh, let's jump into it. All right, so the first trade that I'm going to go ahead and make here is this one, Malcolm Brogdon and a first round pick, and we're going to pick up Kristaps Porzingis, who we can go ahead and make into a power forward, and also bringing back a first round pick so we're not losing out too much on this trade. We're going to go ahead and make that one and jump over here to roster, change Porzingis to a power forward. He goes up to an 88. So this is kind of our one-two punch, I'm thinking, uh, Kawhi and Porzingis being being our main guys you know Kawhi obviously our superstar uh, hopeful finals MVP when all is said and done in this challenge and Porzingis uh, just his backup guy you know he's a backup guy to Luka right now we know he can get it done so we're gonna go ahead and jump in and keep making some more trades all right and the next trade that we're gonna make here is this one uh, trading with the Oklahoma City Thunder getting rid of Buddy Heald Mo Bamba and another first round pick but a 2024 first round pick uh, bringing in kind of our one two center punch combo uh, with Bam Adebayo and Jared Allen, uh, two solid defensive players, two guys that aren't on huge contracts, and I'll secure them for the next two years. So we'll go ahead and do that, and then I just want to jump over here to coaching and take a look. Uh, so obviously our guards uh, not looking so good, but we haven't made too many trades to adjust that. Uh, Shabazz Napier and Gary Payton is definitely not the way I want to run it, or Gary Payton the second. I would love to have regular Gary Payton. Uh, but uh, yeah, having Kawhi Leonard, Kristaps, and Bam as our last three guys there, uh, you know, in the front court is uh, freaking fantastic. And then off the bench, Jared Allen. We still got Willie Colley Stein. I don't know why Todd Gibson is listed as a center because he's just he's just not a center. He's a power forward. But I, I don't know necessarily that we'd want Taj Gibson. I don't know. I don't know actually. If we go ahead and change him to a power forward, uh, honestly, I feel like Taj could be decent. I just want to take a look. You know, he can for a power forward. C plus is eh, but he can shoot from the mid range. So we'll go ahead and make that move. Uh, move him over to the power forward and we're gonna go ahead and probably trade Willie Colley Stein next all right and then we're gonna go ahead and make this trade right here so we are getting rid of Willie Colley Stein Cam Reddish this first round pick and Jeff Green so giving up 
you know, a, a decent amount, but bringing in Dennis Schroeder, who's going to be our starting point guard, uh, who I'm absolutely happy with that. I love Dennis Schroeder. love the way he's been playing for the OKC Thunder this year. Uh, and then we're going to bring in OG on an OB. That's one of my guys, but unfortunately, we're probably going to go ahead and flip him uh, to go ahead and get a starting shooting guard out of that uh, and go ahead and complete our starting lineup. Um, and the one other thing that I've been realizing is a lot of these trades are involving this guy right here, Taj Gibson, who I did make a power forward, and he is an 80 overall. Um, but a lot of trades involving Taj Gibson. Uh, so I'm assuming that's a that's a, a player that the CPU is going to target a lot. Uh, so probably going to see some really bad trades involving Taj Gibson uh, when it gets started that we're going to be required to accept. But yeah, we'll go ahead and make this deal right here. Uh, honestly, I'm not even going to. I'm just going to jump right into the next one and uh, do OG on an OB. Pair him with a first, and hopefully should be able to grab a decent shooting guard out of that. I mean, Jalen Brunson would be fine as a shooting guard, but six foot one uh, is a little short. Uh, what else we got here? Monte Morris is obviously more point guard. Matisse Thibel is not a bad idea, but I'd prefer him as a small forward. Karis Levert and Nerlens Noel. We already have a backup center in Jared Allen, but maybe trade Nerlens Noel. And I don't know that we necessarily need Jamal Crawford. So actually, we'll go ahead and make this deal, uh, and I'm going to keep shopping around some trades. All right, so here we are after a few trades that I made off camera, and I'm feeling good. I think we're going to go ahead and run the team that we have and go into the season. Uh, so, yeah, obviously, you would know everybody here from the starting lineup. We got Dennis Schroeder and Karis LeVert. Uh, a bit of an, uh, let's go with an underrated uh, uh, backcourt there. Um, obviously, they're just an 80, uh, 81 and 80 overall, but, you know, Dennis Schroeder, I feel much better than 81. Karis LeVert, much better than an 80. Uh, so, yeah, our underrated backcourt to go with our. Uh, well, our, our crazy front court with Kawhi Leonard, Kristaps Porzingis, and Bam Adebayo. Then off the bench, we got Jared Allen, Taj Gibson, Jalen Brunson, and I picked up Duncan Robinson. Oh, sorry, Jalen Brunson, you didn't know either. So yeah, I picked up Jalen Brunson. Uh, I don't even remember who I got rid of for him. Couldn't tell you. And Duncan Robinson, I believe it was Shabazz Napier and like a, a second round pick, and we were able to bring in Duncan Robinson. So, I mean, I'm liking everything that's going on. I, we know how good of a shooter Duncan Robinson is now. Uh, you know, obviously these stats don't, don't say anything about how good he is. Uh, Jalen Brunson's a solid player, you know, just to come off the bench, be a point guard for us and, and put up some stats. Uh, Taj Gibbs and Jared Allen. I mean, yeah, I'm liking, I'm liking what the team's got going on. And obviously every other team is a fantasy draft team. So nobody's going to be this, uh, this well-rounded across their whole team. So this is probably our best shot is this very first season right here as the other teams, you know, they're not making trades like we are, but uh, what could really screw us over here is the CPU offered trade. So I'm just going to go ahead and get simming. Let's let, honestly, just, just for the sake of it, let's see how long it takes. And we already got one and it already sucks. It already sucks. Tristan Thompson and James Ennis, I'm going to assume that is for Dennis Schroeder and Kadeem Allen. We're missing, we're, we're losing our, our starting point guard and getting back no point guard in return. So obviously we have no choice. Uh, hello, accept offer, there we go. We have no choice but to go ahead and accept the offer and now we have to look at what our thing looks like. So honestly we have Jalen Brunson, I wouldn't mind if he started, but off the bench things are looking messed up. So James Ennis who we got and then Tristan Thompson. Uh, there's nothing against us trading Tristan Thompson. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and trade Tristan Thompson because uh, it honestly it doesn't matter that we got James Ennis. He's not even getting minutes on the team anyway. So we're going to go ahead and trade Tristan Thompson and his big-ass contract and this pick right here. And we need to bring in preferably a point guard. Reggie Jackson wouldn't be bad. Evan Fournier. I mean, this trade looks great right here uh, to get Bojan Bogdanovic and Brandon Clark. Um, but we don't need either of these guys necessarily. Our power forward position is pretty set. Bring in Lou Will and George Hill. No. <laughs> Done deal, done deal. Bring in Spencer Dinwiddie. Almost almost making me feel like that was an improvement. I mean, who did we get? Uh, Dennis Schroeder, and then we bring in Spencer Dinwiddie. I, don't, I love Spencer Dinwiddie, and then we still got the same team, pretty much, in terms of players that are getting minutes. So, yeah, I'm completely fine with that. Let's keep moving forward, and I will only stop now uh, every time that we see a new trade. All right, and here we are with the next trade offer. Uh, I haven't even had the chance to evaluate this one. I mean, in essence, I don't know why they're giving us Patty Mills. We don't need him, but I, I, I mean, it's a straight swap, a center for a center, a center, and a point guard for a point guard. Obviously, getting rid of Jared Allen is not great. Um, 
you know something I'm almost curious about is going in, doing this, accepting it, at exception, whatever, and then going ahead and offering up those same two players that we just brought in. So who did we get? Mo Wagner and Patty Mills, and just throw them up the way it was. What are the odds that they, I mean, they would never offer us our same two players back, right? That that just couldn't happen. Who'd they took? Jared Allen? Yeah, no, that's, that's not even an offer. Um... They took Jared Allen and Raul Neto, who wasn't getting minutes anyway. So we're not worried about... Honestly, yeah, let's just go ahead and we don't need anything other than another center. I've seen a couple center offers. Nothing I'm loving all that much. Um, see, the interesting thing is we're going to get some decent players back, but we don't really need any of this is the issue, the real issue. Uh, yeah, none of these trades look good. I think we're just going to go ahead and... I mean, Kevon Looney is not the guy I want as a backup. I just like this trade because of Pat Bev. But we don't even need Pat Bev because we got Jalen Brunson. So maybe what we'll go ahead and do is accept this trade strictly for Patrick Beverly, who I'm a fan of Patrick Beverly. I like those guys that are gritty. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and make this trade, Patrick Beverly, and then we'll try to trade Kevon Looney and I guess Jalen Brunson, who's our backup point guard right now, uh, and see then we still need a backup center. So we'll go ahead and try to do that. All right, in terms of backup center, we're going to go ahead and pick up Dwight Powell on a two-year contract here. Like I said, Jalen Brunson, Kevon Looney, and a second-round pick. Uh, bring in Dwight Powell and add a nice little first-round pick from the Sixers uh, for this coming year. So we'll go ahead and do that one and flip over here. Just take a look, make sure the team is looking as it should. They want Patrick Beverly to start over Spencer Dinwiddie. Honestly, I'm going to leave it. Honestly, I'm going to leave it. I'm not, I'm not upset with that. Uh, Spencer Dinwiddie, like, six-man beast, he would be coming off the bench there. So, Pat Bev, Karis LeVert. I just realized that we got, like, the the one-two punch of the uh, Brooklyn Nets here, Karis LeVert and Spencer Dinwiddie. But, hey, um, Patrick Beverly, Karis LeVert, Kawhi Leonard, Chris Stapps, Bam, Spencer Dinwiddie, Taj Gibson, Dwight Powell now, and Duncan Robinson. So, team's looking good, and uh, let's go ahead and keep moving forward. You know, I really forgot how often you get trade offers in this game it's probably been it's not even it's not been a week it's been like it's been like five days and we've already gotten another trade offer and it, it and it already sucks uh what a surprise karis lavert and a first round pick is what we're giving up and we're gonna get back nerland's noel and austin rivers that trade sucks that trade really sucks uh, i'm glad i turned off chemistry because the teams that would make this challenge impossible teams chemistry would be at zero percent by the time that we really hit the playoffs so uh, yeah, obviously have no choice but to go ahead and accept this trade, and uh, I'm probably just going to do the exact same thing here, is grab the two guys we just got, which is Nerlens Noel and Austin Rivers, and throw them right back into the trade. Uh, <laughs> two guys that we've had at portions of time right here we could theoretically get back. What is it exactly that we lost again? See, I'm terrible with this. We lost Karis Lever Done deal. Done deal. Well, that was easy. We lost nothing out of that trade. Our team is exactly the same moving forward. So, hey, sometimes you love when it works out perfectly. We didn't need Corey Joseph. I swear maybe we had Corey Joseph for, like, a portion of time. Maybe I'm crazy. Anyway, let's keep on. And once again, basically a week later, here we are uh, getting Nico Melli and a second for Taj Gibson. Another, not, sometimes you see on the, on the odd, odd chance you see decent trades. Uh, you get offered decent trades from this, but all of these have been downgrades in terms of our team. Uh, we don't need Nico Melli. Uh, I don't want to give up this first round pick because I feel like that somehow, if the challenge goes longer than this first year, which I'm, I'm assuming it might, uh, could be valuable. So I'm just going to go ahead and shop around Nico and some seconds here. Uh, I'm only looking at Kevon Looney because I want to know if I could make him a power forward, which I don't really think I could. His shooting isn't all that. You know, PJ Tucker is definitely going to get better as a power forward, and I'm a big fan of P.J. Tucker. So we're going to go ahead and do this trade. Hello. Yes, we're going to bring in P.J. Tucker. Go ahead and switch P.J. to a power forward where he gets up to a 79. Take a look at the rotation. So obviously starting lineups looking the same. Spencer Dinwiddie, Dwight Powell, P.J., and Duncan Robinson. I'm happy with that. We lost Taj, Gib uh, Taj Gibson. But I, was, I haven't even been looking at stats, so I have no idea how he was playing. So let's just go ahead and keep going, and please don't give me a trade offer. And there's the trade offer. And once again, another team wants Karis LeVert. So TJ McConnell and a first-round lottery-protected pick for Karis LeVert. Why? 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 Why do teams even offer? I guess maybe they knew. Maybe they knew that we were doing this challenge, and they knew that they could give us absolute garbage, uh, and we would have no choice to accept it. So TJ McConnell and... 
this first. And honestly, let's just see what are the odds that they give us Karis right back. No? I don't even know what team we traded with. We need a shooting guard. Trey Burke, you know. No, he's six foot. I know how much 2K hates shorter players. Uh, not hates, but doesn't really respect shorter players. Um, might go ahead and make this one right here. Alec Burks for TJ McConnell. Uh, and Alec Burks. You know, I just realized we lost our starting shooting guard, too. So you know what? We are actually going to... No, thank you. Uh, we are actually going to throw in... Because we need a better starting shooting guard than... Uh, who would... Alec Burks, uh, considering the way our team looks right now. So let's go ahead and do that. This first, and we don't even have any more firsts. Can we just throw multiple seconds? Oh, this is not looking good. Because I do not want Alec Burks being our starting shooting guard. That would not be ideal. So maybe we need to do a little bit more than just trading TJ McConnell. What else do we got? TJ McConnell, James Ennis, or would Torian Prince have more? You know what? Cam Johnson, we're still just sitting here hanging on to. Let's do Cam Johnson in this first round pick and TJ McConnell and try to bring in Robert Covington. I could probably make a shooting guard. He'd just get a little bit worse. I'm not unhappy with that. Tomas Sadoransky would be a decent guy, but $10 million a year. I don't know how much that matters, really. Norman Powell. Uh, if you don't know, I'm a Raptors fan, and Norman Powell speaks to me as a Raptors. Oh, but Bogdanovich as well is a guy that can shoot. Okay, see, now we're talking better options. I like Norman, though. I like Norman. A lot of, you know, a lot of people don't really put the respect on Norman Powell that he deserves, but I'm a big fan of Norman, and looking at his numbers, he's playing great for the Lakers over there. So we're going to go ahead and make this one. We're going to bring in Norman, and you know what? We just, we got Henny Smith on the team just for the, just for the sake of it. J.R. Henny Smith on the team. So Pat Bev, Norman Powell, Kawhi, Porzingis, Bam, and then the bench is looking exactly the same. Let's go ahead and keep tracking forward. And another terrible trade offer. Uh, we were just talking about Robert Covington, and now we're making the trade. Spencer Dinwiddie, and uh, sorry, trading, trading away Spencer Dinwiddie, getting Robert Covington, and a top 10 protected first. And the terrible trades honestly just keep coming. Um, yeah, I don't even know what I want to do with this one, because I certainly don't want to keep Robert Covington. Maybe, well, maybe we keep Robert Covington. No, I like P.J. Tucker more, honestly, as much as Robert Covington... You could argue, no, 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 no. I, I, I like PJ, PJ more. So we're going to go ahead and trade Robert Covington. And we just lost our starting point guard, which uh, that hurts. That hurts. So let's just go ahead. I don't, I don't want to have to give up this first overall pick, but we need quality uh, as our backup. Or our, our, not even our, no, our starting point guard. So you know what? This could be the trade right here. Not our starting point guard, but I guess our six man. Okay, let's let's... I don't know. I don't know. I'm really, I'm really stuck in terms of what I want to do because I definitely want to have somebody as a backup point guard. Um, I think we'll do this one. We'll do Eric Bledsoe, and we're just going to be having T.J. McConnell, and we'll probably just uh, maybe trade him or maybe not give him minutes. But I think this is the best deal right here is Eric Bledsoe. All right, so here's what the team is looking like now. We got Eric Bledsoe uh, as our starting point guard now, and then Patrick Beverly coming off the bench, get, still getting 14 minutes, which is all right. You know, he was actually playing pretty nice for us if, if a lot of those numbers were us. 10, 5, and 5, pretty much. So, I mean, Patrick Beverly was playing great uh, in the minutes he was getting. And then we got TJ McConnell now uh, as a 10th man that's not getting minutes. Uh, and I'm fine with that. I think we'll just hold on to him and he can be a potential trade piece uh, for, you know, when we have to readjust our team after the next terrible trade that the CPU is going to offer us. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where? I can't see the trade deadline. But it's somewhere around here, and I, 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 need, I need the trade deadline to come soon. I don't know how to feel. I know exactly what I'm going to do with this trade. We're getting Karis LeVert back, which is cool. And we're getting Roy Hachimura. Uh, I like Roy Hachimura, but we're losing Bam. Bam was one of our guys, one of the guys that I was absolutely feeling. So, like, I know exactly what I'm going to do with this trade. Uh, I can't really, I, I, I can visualize it, but it's, I can't speak it into words. Uh, this right here. We're going to make Kristaps Porzingis back to a center. And then uh, I don't even know if I was going to change anything else. I can't remember what I was going to do. Eric Bledsoe, uh, Norman Powell, Kawhi Leonard, PJ Tucker, I guess, is now our starting power forward, which is um, whatever, because uh, I was going to have Roy Hachimura be our starting power forward. Uh, our team's just getting progressively worse and younger and I don't know why people are giving us these deals but 
I mean, this is what it's looking like. Now Patrick Beverly is not getting minutes, which is not what I want. So we'll make it a 10-man rotation. I mean, I like up at the top there, the minutes per possession is all green. I like when it looks green. It makes my it makes my brain happy. Uh, and I just realized maybe what we should have been doing this whole time is having Kawhi be our first scoring option. Because uh, I'm assuming... Let's, let's, let's take a little break. Take a little breather. Take a look at Kawhi. 24 points a game. Doing his thing. Eric Bledsoe, technically our next scorer, but he was on a different team for a lot of time. Uh, and then Porzingis is also kind of doing his thing. I wish maybe his scoring output was a little higher. Uh, but yeah, that's what our team's looking like now. It's looking fine. Please just let me get to the, the trade deadline, and then we don't have to worry about it. Because uh, once we're at the trade deadline, we can make... <sighs> I don't even get a word in, do I? I was going to say once we're at the trade deadline, then we can make trades and like have our team set. So we'll know exactly what our team is looking like going into the playoffs. But I, I can't even get a word in. So we got Cantor lost our backup power forward. I don't even know if Ennis Cantor can shoot. Can White Powell shoot? 64 is not bad. Where's Ennis Cantor? I probably went right past him. I did. Uh, his three points not quite what Dwight Powell's is. So if we make Dwight Powell a power forward, and then we go over here to coaching, and then he becomes our starting. So we got Eric Bledsoe, Norman Powell, Kawhi, Dwight Powell. Look at that. We got two Powells. I don't know how I didn't even notice that. And then Porzingis as our center. Uh, Karis LeVert as a six-man. He's a killer six-man. And his Cantor off the bench. P.J. Tucker, Pat Bev, and Duncan Robinson. Let's keep it going. Oh, God. Oh, God. I don't know if I can do three years of this. I don't know that I can do a three-year challenge. I might genuinely bail on the three-year challenge and say this is a, a do-or-die season. Because I can't take this. I cannot sit here and look and see that I have to accept a trade getting rid of Karis LeVert and bringing in Ty Jerome. I, I can't I can't accept that. We're gonna we're, I think that what, what we're gonna have to do for this one is do what we said we were gonna do. Ty Jerome, who's now the worst player on our entire roster, throw in TJ McConnell, throw in that first round pick that we just got. Uh, what are we even looking for? Karis LeVert we got rid of, who's a shooting guard. I think I'm just gonna have to stop uh, being picky. Darren Collison. I like Darren Collison. I think we're just going to have to stop being picky. I think maybe we'll do this one for Shake Milton. Uh, I like Shake. He just hit a game winner against somebody in the bubble. Um, but I also like this one right here. We've had Jalen Brunson. He's played for us this season. In fact, I think he started the season with us, as it, as it says New York there. So I think we'll bring in Jalen Brunson. And what I mean by I have to stop being picky is in terms of position. Because I know here we're going to do this trade. Uh whatever with the exceptions we're trading so much that we just have to do all these money exceptions so that's what's going to make a second and third season of this just absolutely painful um, but what i mean with the pickiness is right here jalen brunson is a 79 overall point guard and an 81 overall shooting guard and i don't care anymore uh he's going to be our backup shooting guard because that's what we lost right yes we lost our backup shooting guard so now jalen brunson is our um our, our shooting guard off the bench and our our new six man and you know he's putting up fine numbers so I'm completely happy with that. Let's keep going. And like I said, the uh, the trade deadline could not come sooner. All I can do is really just just give up. I'm not going to give up. I didn't. That's not what I meant. I don't know if you saw that trade, if you had the chance to take a look at that trade. But we just got rid of Porzingis for Robert Covington and Ricky Rubio. I, I have no idea. I have no idea. Ricky Rubio, Robert Covington, and this first overall pick from the Spurs... So we lost Porzingis. That's the only piece that we lost. So in theory, we just need uh, a center because uh, he was playing center for us. I kind of like this trade for Victor Oladipo. Maybe that would mean we make a couple moves, but I don't like Kelly Olynyk as our starting center. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what we want to do. This one as well, Malcolm Brogdon, who we don't really need. We could make him a shooting guard. And then Cody Zeller. Uh, you know what? No, we're going to do this one right here. We're going to do... Wait. Malcolm Brogdon's got four years. Never mind. We're going to do this one right here. Uh, but we're not going to keep Cody Zeller as our center. So I like bringing in Malcolm Brogdon. Uh, I also like it because, he, you know, like I said, he's got the height. And he can go ahead and make him a shooting guard. Uh, so now if we take a look at the coaching, see, th it's going to make this video so long too, because I have so much changing to do and I, I don't want to show, I don't want to leave anything to off camera. So now our starting lineups looking like this, and I do not want Ennis Cantor as our starting center. So I think we'll trade Cody Zeller. Um, 
I honestly don't even know what I want to do. We'll trade Cody Zeller because now we have two shooting guards off the bench. So we'll trade Cody Zeller and uh, and I think Jalen Brunson. We're going to trade Cody Zeller and Jalen Brunson, bring in a center, and then the team should be good. All right, we're going to bring back the boy, Jared Allen. Honestly, I can't be bothered to keep looking and showing you guys all these trades. It's just there's so much going on all the time. We're just going to take a look at what the rotation looks like here. I see all this green, which makes me happy, which makes me think everything's looking good. So Eric Bledsoe, Malcolm Brogdon, our backcourt is looking a lot better than at least when we started the season. Front court not so much because instead of having Porzingis and Bam, we've got Dwight Powell and Jared Allen. So there's always going to be a, a gap in the team somewhere. Uh, it's not It's not a great... It's not a great uh, set of big men here in Dwight Powell and Jared Allen, but it'll do the trick. And then Ennis Cantor, Norman Powell, P.J. Tucker, Patrick Beverly, and Duncan Robinson off the bench. And we've got Bobby Portis still here as another trade piece moving forward. All right, I think this might be the first trade that I'm not totally appalled by because uh, I know exactly what we're going to do here. We bring in Victor Oladipo for Malcolm Brogdon, which is whatever. I'd kind of prefer Malcolm Brogdon, but Vic is completely like all-star caliber player so we're happy with that and then we're bringing Kelly Oubre for Norman Powell which is actually kind of a, a fine swap and I think what we'll do is make uh, Duncan Robinson who we currently have as our backup small forward just change him change him to a shooting guard uh, and he should pretty much just be the same overall all right and the next trade offer here that we got is uh, so Kelly Oubre is gone as well as Gary Payton the second who's just been sitting in our reserves this entire time bringing in so it's pretty much a straight swap small forward for small forward here um, so don't have to worry about that. But we're also bringing in Rudy Gay. I don't know if Rudy Gay is going to get minutes. We can look, uh, accept the trade, go over to coaching. And so technically it says no s backup small forward, but that's just because Duncan Robinson needs minutes. So now, interestingly enough, we have just Rudy Gay and Bobby Portis sitting here. I think we're just going to sit there and hang on to them. Uh, and what we'll probably do is we'll be able to use these guys as, like I said, trade pieces uh, so when it comes time and it is time for us to make our last trades before we're heading into the back half of the season and then the playoffs, we'll be able to use these guys as uh, trade, like some leverage trade pieces uh, to improve the main chunk of our team. And something just while we have the opportunity to stop and something to look at, uh, I have been so concerned with how awful these trades have been. I haven't even realized that our team uh, is continuing to kill it 34 and 13. So we actually have a great record. Uh, and like I said, making this a one season thing seems doable and is probably what I'm going to do regardless if we make it far enough in the playoffs. Maybe I'll be pissed off if we lose in the first round, which seems to happen a lot uh, in my videos. But yeah, we're just going to go ahead and keep trucking along. And oh my goodness, please just don't give me a terrible trade. Kawhi Leonard for uh, Cristiano Felicio. That's what the next one is going to be. I can feel it coming. So two days later here, another trade. Dwight Powell for Jabari Parker. It's not great. I mean, it's not as big of a hit. Jabari Parker is now our starting power forward, which is like, yeah, you don't even know what to say when you find out Jabari Parker is your starting power forward. But uh, it could be worse. It could be worse. That's what we're telling ourselves. Next trade that we're being forced into again, Taj Gibson in a second for Enos Cantor. Uh, go ahead and make that trade. Again, I don't know exactly what we're going to do with the, about this one. This one's probably going to be one of those where we're just going to go ahead and trade. We lost Cantor, so we lost our backup center, and we got Taj Gibson. So what we'll probably just do is throw Taj Gibson and who is somebody that we had here? Uh, Bobby Portis. I don't know. Uh, see, we're going to get two players back in return, it seems. Uh, all we're looking for is a backup center. Uh, and it doesn't seem like there's anybody too quality out there as far as I saw. Mason Plumley seems like the best deal, and then James Johnson, who wouldn't be getting minutes on our team. So that's probably the way to go. And I think that is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to bring in Mason Plumley. Uh, not ideal, but hey, it is what it is. So the team's looking pretty much the same. Instead of NS Cantor, it is... Um, no, I don't want Rudy Gay getting minutes. Sorry, I had to go ahead and change that. Uh, instead of NS Cantor getting our backup center minutes, it's Mason Plumley. All right, the next trade is kind of a big one. Uh, we're bringing in Steven Adams. So we've got, you know, a very, very solid center now. Uh, but we're losing Vic Oladipo. So w let's go ahead and make this trade. I haven't exactly, you know, it didn't immediately spring to my mind what's going to happen. There's no way in hell J.R. Smith is starting as our shooting guard. Uh, but now we got Steven Adams and Jared Allen. So we'll go ahead and trade Mason Plumley. I think. We'll go ahead and trade Mason Plumley. 
and uh, I have no idea. See, why, why, why would you not make Duncan Robinson our starting shooting guard? Why would, why would this computer want to make J.R. Smith our starting shooting guard? I have no idea. But we're gonna go ahead and trade Mason Plumley, uh, and turn him into preferably a very good uh, shooting guard. Not very good, a solid shooting guard. All right, we're gonna go ahead and make this trade right here. Bring in Marcus Smart, so a solid defensive guy who will probably be our starting shooting guard, and then Bog uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich, who will be our backup, uh, and then Duncan Robinson just won't be getting minutes, uh, but we'll hold on to him as a trade piece, and we're gonna go ahead and get rid of Rudy Gay, who wasn't getting minutes, and Mason Plumley anyway, because we don't need uh, another center, because we already have Steven Adams and Jared Allen, and now everything should be looking pretty green, the nice, peaceful colors on the eyes there. Uh, so the team's pretty chicken up. Eric Bledsoe, Marcus Smart, Kawhi Leonard, Jabari Parker, and Steven Adams. Still, I mean, I'm not s entirely disappointed by that starting lineup. Uh, and then Jared Allen, OG Ananobi, uh, Bogdanovich, PJ Tucker, and Pat Bev. It's actually so interesting to see how many players have been on our team, off our team, and then on our team again. Like, I look at just Jared Allen, and I've seen he's been our starting center. He's been our sixth, uh, sixth man off the bench, um, and he's also been not on the team. So there's just, yeah, there's so much to see how much is going on. But we are we are right near the trade deadline. I don't know exactly which day it's at because I believe we have a game on top of it. But we're going to keep hit simming here. And please just, oh, my God, it's right there. Oh, my God. Today's trade deadline, would you like to stop simulating abso freaking lootly? Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We freaking made it. We made it to the trade deadline. Things are looking good. Here we are, Kawhi Leonard. Oh, beautiful. I love this man. He got my team their first championship. I love you, Kawhi. 25 points, and you're absolutely carrying this team so far. Uh, what was that at the bottom? Oh, it was the all-star voting. Um, yeah, okay. So Eric Bledsoe, Marcus Smart, Kawhi Leonard. I like that three. Uh, honestly, I would just look to improve Jabari Parker. If we can get a better starting power forward, like if we go ahead, and this could be really, really simple. Jabari Parker who's still young. Jabari Parker's 24 years old. It's just too bad that he's bad. Uh, and then Duncan Robinson. Uh, wow, Duncan Robinson is older than Jabari Parker. That kind of hurts my head. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and do that. And what did I even say that we wanted? A better starting power forward. Thank you for reminding me. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I kind of liked this trade. I mean, Robert Covington isn't a better starting power forward. No, 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 no. Okay, a better starting power forward. Buddy Healed. Who's our starting shooting guard right now? Somebody that's not as good as Buddy Healed. Um, I'm not entirely sure that there's a better starting power forward option. Um, I'm not sure. I'm really not sure what I want to do. I don't want Jabari Parker starting is pretty much the way I look at it. Uh, but I don't want to throw anybody else in a trade. Can I just throw another pick? Not really. So, we're kind of looking at what we're looking at. Daniel Tice, you know, I think Daniel Tice can shoot the ball a little bit. B, three-point scoring. So if we made him, I don't know that if Shabazz would be getting minutes or not, but if we made him a power forward, he'd be better than Jabari Parker. So we're going to go ahead and do that. At least I'm hoping he's going to be better than Jabari Parker. Because... It's Jabari Parker, and he's an 83 overall. So now Eric Bledsoe, Marcus Smart, Kawhi Leonard, Daniel Tice, and Steven Adams. Uh, and then we got Jared Allen, OG Ananobi, Bogdanovich, and PJ Tucker, and Patrick Beverly with Shabazz Napier still. So considering the pieces that we still have to trade, Shabazz and James Ennett, uh, I just don't know. I just don't know. Like, theoretically, okay, let's see this. Steven Adams, Shabazz Napier... Let's just throw that up. I have no idea how to feel right now because I have no idea. Is there a better center option? Is Mitchell Robinson better? Not necessarily. Derek Rose, obviously we wouldn't have a center then. Yusuf Nurkic. That one's interesting. Would I prefer Yusuf Nurkic? You know what we could do theoretically is make Yusuf Nurkic a power forward and then try to trade Daniel Tice again. That would be a bit of a risk, but then we'd have... Oh, oh, hold on. I like Clint as well. I like Clint Capella. And I like DeMontis Sabonis. I don't know. I think it would be... Okay, 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 okay. It would be a risk. But you know what? If we're making this our only year, we take risks around here. So, 
Yusuf Nurkic is on the team. Bag secured for Yusuf Nurkic, who's now our power forward at 87 overall. And Daniel Tice, who we're going to keep a power forward, but then trade, who we just brought in. He hasn't even played a game, but he was on the roster for a couple minutes. Daniel Tice and a second. And we need a starting center. Who's our other center? Jared Allen. So, theoretically a starter. See, why do you give me other good players? Why do you give me options like this? Why do you give me Buddy Heald? Because cause then I just don't know how to feel. I could bring in Nerlens Noel, and he'd be our backup center. And it seems like that's going to be the trade that I have to make here. Or Cody Zeller, but I don't want to bring in Cody Zeller. So I think we're going to bring in Nerlens Noel, and he's going to be our backup center. And I don't know if I'm happier with this than the way the team looked before. Probably not. Pro pro probably not, realistically. But I feel like Nurkic, more than Steven Adams, can be a big contributor to the success of the team. So it's kind of like Kawhi backed up by like a Nurkic-Bledsoe combo. So the way I look at it is like... Kawhi, for whatever reason, I, this is the way I see it in my head. Like, you look at one of the better teams in the NBA, you got Giannis, okay? And in this case, it's like we got Kawhi backed up. And then and then you look at the Bucks, and they're a nice, well-rounded team. So you got Kawhi Leonard, who's like the Giannis. You got Nurkic, who's like the Chris Middleton. And then Eric Bledsoe is, well, the Eric Bledsoe. And then you got solid defensive players like Jared Allen, Marcus Smart. Then you got solid players off the bench like OG, Bogdanovich, P.J. Tucker, Patrick Beverly, and Erlens Noel. This is, this is the way it's going to be. We're running this team the rest of the way through. We don't have to worry about anything. So, yeah, I'm going to run this team. I'm going to simulate the rest of the season, and I will catch you guys at the end of the season and see how it goes. Um, Kawhi Leonard for MVP, baby. Let's get it. All right, and here we are at the end of the season. I mean, what, a, what did you expect? Luka Doncic takes home the MVP, 32 points a game, uh, and all that other jazz that Luka does. I'll have you know that this season has taken me over an hour to complete because of how often I've had to stop and contemplate trades and talk about how much I hate this challenge. Uh, Zion, Rookie of the Year, Dennis Schroeder, six man, uh, who was our starting point guard for a portion of time. It's weird to look and see how much everything is kind of like the way it usually looks after a fantasy draft. Luka is, it's either Luka or Giannis' MVP. Uh, it's either Zion or Jaws' rookie. It's pretty much always Dennis Schroeder, who's the sixth man uh, after a fantasy draft. Kawhi defensive, that's our guy. I mean, what a surprise. It's always Kawhi Leonard. Uh, and then Luka wins most improved again. So it's it's funny to see how much things have changed. I mean, at least through our team. We've had probably 30 different players come through our roster this season. But everything looks exactly the same on the award winners. Uh, take a look at this. All-NBA first team, nothing too crazy there. Second team, nothing too crazy. Vucevic is a second teamer playing alongside Kevin Durant. All right, you love to see that. Uh, and third team, nothing too crazy as well, but our boy Kawhi Leonard grabs a third team selection. Uh, here we are, obviously the first seed. I didn't even mention the record, but 58 wins, 24 losses on the season. And we were only one game better than the Nets, who were the second best team in the Eastern Conference. Uh, we're not going to contemplate my, anything too much. Honestly, you know what? We'll take a look at the. We'll, we'll, we'll slow down again. Take a look at the stats. As we saw, Kawhi Leonard put up 26 a game, seven rebounds, three and a half assists, uh, two steals, and just under a block per game, shooting 53%. Eric Bledsoe was the next scorer on our team, which is really interesting to think about. But hey, he scored 15 points a game, and he he was on our team for quite a few games. Yusuf Nurkic, who played the back end of the season with us, ended up putting up 15, uh, but also his 10 rebounds a game. Uh, Bogdanovich did his thing, 13 points. Marcus Smart. Uh, nine points, but I sure defensively he was that guy. Same with Jared Allen. Um, Nerlens Noel was actually the next guy. Then Pat Bev, OG Ananobi, and PJ Tucker. And supposedly James Johnson put up four points a game. I mean, I'm sure that's that wasn't for our team. I'm sure that was for the Chicago Bulls that he played for before. Um, yeah, I'm happy with that season. Looking at how many great defensive players we have on our team, I'm actually just wanting to look really quick and see how good we were defensively. Surprise, surprise, uh, 109.4 points against per game. We were the best team in the East defensively and the best team in the entire league, actually, defensively. But the Cleveland Cavaliers, right behind us, uh, actually 0.1 points against per game behind us. So, hey, best defensive team in the league. I'll take it. We built a good team, and honestly, let's just hope that the 2K Sim doesn't screw us over. First round simulation, I'm just, I can't even, oh, my God, oh, my God, that was so close. We, uh, we won in seven games against the Boston Celtics. I didn't even stop to look at who's on the Boston Celtics. I mean, we were up 3-1. They came back two games, so that scared the crap out of me, and it went so fast. 
Uh, I'm not even going to worry. I'm just going to keep simulating because the team is doing the thing and they're no longer doing the thing. Uh, that thing being winning. So, yeah, we're just going to make some easy some easy adjustments, take down some minutes from Nerlens Noel. Just everybody off the bench is going to lose some minutes because Kawhi needs more minutes. Uh, yeah, Kawhi should be playing like 42 minutes a game. Uh, Eric Bledsoe can get 30. Yusuf Nurkic can get 34. Jared Allen, a couple more minutes. And Marcus Smart can get 29. Uh, yeah, honestly, that's, that's all I can think to do is go ahead and do that. I'm not even going to worry about anything else. Just run it the way it does. I just realized I didn't even look at system proficiency like all season. We weren't even running the best system proficiency. Defense, of course, would have been the best system proficiency. And we still have David Fisdale as our coach. I, I really, in terms of the, the really technical stuff, I kind of screwed the pooch. But yeah, we're switching to a defensive system, which might help the team considering, I don't know, we're pretty much built to defend. So yeah, uh, all we can do is just go ahead and simcast this game now away. We are in Washington and losing to Washington. And we're down big. Come on, we're really going to need to come back here. Down 19 points with seven and a half minutes left in the game. And that really is going to be that. All right, well, we have been eliminated by Paul George, Gordon Hayward, Montrez Harrell, and, uh, yeah, the Washington Wizards. Ah, oh, Boban. We got eliminated by Boban, who didn't play, but it's Boban. I'll take it. We got eliminated by Boban. That's what I'm going to say. All right, well, this has been a very interesting challenge. Uh, we ended up the first seed, 58 wins. Uh, a great effort, but uh, unfortunately, we could not make it work out, losing to the Washington Wizards in six games in the Eastern Conference Semifinals. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy, once again, make sure that you hit the like button. It really helps out the channel since we're just getting started here on YouTube, as well as hit the subscribe button if you want to see more content like this. Hopefully not exactly like this. Hopefully more actually winning of championships and less depression. Thank you so much for watching, and have a good one. I knew we should have got Clint Capella.